Hey folks, Aaron from Beansprout here. I'm here today to talk a little bit, um, just sort of off the cuff about banjo rim design, construction, prototyping, successes and failures, um, and uh, kind of where I'm at with it. So I've only been into the banjo thing for about uh, 15 years or so, so I've got a ton to learn. And sometimes recently I've kind of assigned myself homework in my building um, to try to, uh, you know, fill in gaps in my own education. So, um, in general, I build banjo rims by making a block rim. And what that means is I take little blocks like this, I glue up eight of them in a ring, glue up multiple layers of eight, offset from each other, turn them in a lathe, make the banjo rim. Um, what the banjo rim really is, is it's a drum. Um, but in order to hold the pitch and stay in tune and sound good, it's got to be stiff and heavy enough to have enough mass and support so that it works. If it's too light, if it's too flexible, um, it, it's hard to keep in tune and be stable. So the block rims I really like and that's generally what I do. I started with block rims because when I first got going the guy I bought metal parts from he just made block rims for me and sent them in the mail so that's just what I got used to. Um, but now over time as I've tried other things it's still probably my favorite way. There's lots of wood in the rim, nice mass to it, but it can go pretty thin and there's not very much glue. Um, so, as part of my, like, you know, education, I started to try out some other little things. So, maybe in the mid-1800s, one of the ways you might just attack, attach a goat skin is just attack it on. So, this is a little thin wooden rim with a skin head on top that's stretched and tacked on and glued on. That's called a, ta a tack head banjo. People still make them today. It's got a cool, funky, old sound. Um, I made this one. Oh, and the original rims might have been, like, a slice of a bucket that a cooper made or a slice of a grain uh, measure that's called, or just a wooden hoop somebody made. Um, this one is a modern little hoop little that's made from eight layers, and it's like a, made by a drum manufacturer. But eight layers, that means there's a lot of glue in here. Um, and uh, they're pretty lightweight, which is nice, but I find that they're not very stable, and the string tension and everything else can make it a little too flexible. So this was fun as a banjo for a while, but it wasn't my vibe. Um, so after folks, you know, wanted to improve on that, they started to design, you know, hooks and nuts and things to hold a, a hoop down to keep the skin tight. But at first, some of those um, instruments might have only had six hooks or so, which is what I did on this one. So this is like the little thin rim with only six hooks and a skin head. And uh, I put a little brass ring on the top as well to uh, add some, w some mass to it. Um, and this instrument's been super fun to play, uh, but it's harder to keep in tune than my block rim instrument is. And I'm curious if having only six hooks and the more flexible rim has makes and makes for a less stable surface. Um, just my musings on that, I'm not sure. Uh, so manufacturers, in order to get things more stable, they started to add lots more hooks and nuts, like this instrument. And also, they started to clad the, uh, the wooden rim with a metal hoop. That's called a spun over rim. This is a 1880s instrument. I think it's a buckbee. Um, and uh, it's got a very stout uh, maple layer with a nice heavy spun over section. Uh, my friend Brooks in Portland makes spun over rims like this. You also see lots of really cheap instruments that look like this, but they're half the weight. They're super flexible. String tension takes them out of whack really easy. They don't sound as good as one like this does. This one's really nice. I have like a Sears and Roebuck instrument from around this time, and it's about half the weight of this. It's just not nearly as nice. So as people wanted to, you know, keep things more stable, they, they started also making rims that were thicker without the spun over. So this is a instrument from Line and Healy in the 20s, and it's over three, about three-eighths of an inch thick. And it's nice and stout, but it's still several laminations. I have several colleagues now that make uh, rims about this thickness where it's only one or two layers. They steam bend them and put them in a press and that seems to work really well and it doesn't include that much glue, which is nice. Um, and then just as a contrast at the other end of it, this is an instrument that I play in my string band um, and I bought the rim and the hardware from Bill Rickard before I even had my own shop. Um, so it's been a while, but it's very thick. It's probably almost a half inch thick and there's a heavy brass tone ring on the top called the tuba phone. This is probably double the weight of any banjo I make right now. Um, but, you know, it's cool. I like it. I play it all the time. So, you know, you're trying to achieve that mass in order to make the banjo ring and be stable, but you can go too heavy and then it just doesn't really help anymore. 
So I really find my block rim is a good happy medium for me. I also sometimes take the block rim and turn down the top and put a brass ring on top. I think that also is a helpful solution. Um, and yeah, it's just also kind of about what sound you're going for. Because sometimes you want a lightweight, funky sound. Sometimes you want a super heavy tone ring sound. And I'm trying to find something right in the middle. So, you know, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rims stacked up here, all doing different things. Um, and uh, I still think my block rim is is my favorite. I think also with stuff like this, sometimes you got to pick one and spend a lifetime mastering it and not do too much messing around. Maybe I've done a little too much messing around with these recently. Um, but I think also for this old Buckby rim, I'm going to make a new neck for it for somebody because this is a really nice banjo. So, I don't know. That's just off the top of my head. Me chatting about banjo stuff. Uh, drop me a line if you have any questions.